Michelle started something now. Because I said to Herman, I'm not going to do anything. Um, but to explain to you that you consist of three dimensions. You consist of spirit, of soul, and of body. That's how God created you. So when Adam and Eve sinned, the spirit side in them died. And it couldn't communicate with God any longer. There was no communication. There was no, it was non-existent. So they were totally alone. Nothing. So can you imagine that? So when God sent his son to die for us on the cross, and he was resurrected, and he brought us forgiveness in life, the moment you accept Christ, your spirit becomes alive again. And then your spirit is saved. That's where you are saved. But your soul still has got a lot of baggage that you are carrying with you and that the way that you've learned and, and, and lived your life. So that is being saved. By what? By the hearing of the word in your spirit and applying what God is saying to you. And then you've got your body because it's there. It's a temple, but it's gone through a lot of things during the years. But that will only be saved the day when you die or when Christ comes back. Then you will have a new body. Well, not a body, but a spirit. You will be a spirit again. Now, how big do you think your spirit is? In relation to your body, how big do you think your spirit is? You have a thought about it. Michelle? Much, much bigger. Much, much bigger. If your spirit, if you, if you accept Christ, and the Bible says to us that Christ in you, the hope of glory, Christ is in you and you are in Christ. It means that Christ is in your spirit. And earth and heaven cannot contain Christ or God or whatever you want to say. It is a trinity. So imagine how big is your spirit. And imagine what you can do with your spirit being alive because Christ, who is the creator, or God who is the creator, is in your spirit. He created you, but he's also given you the Holy Spirit. So that creating force is within you to change you and to do things that you will never be able to do it of yourself. So if we start perceiving God from our spirit, that's when life begins. And that's when we realize who and what God is and when we are able to, to change our ways and believe that what God says in his word is what he's going to do and what he is doing in our lives. So let's say thank you to God for what he's done. I'm not going to read scriptures, but I'm going to praise scriptures and declare scriptures. And I want you to close your eyes and just listen. And if you agree, you agree. But concentrate on what I'm saying and be in agreement with what it says. We declare, Lord, that we give thanks to you, Lord, for all our hearts. We tell you of your wonderful, we tell all of your wonderful deeds. We declare that we give thanks to you, O Lord, for you are good. Your love endures ever. We give thanks to the God of gods. Your love endures forever. We give thanks to the Lord of lords. 
your love endures forever. We declare and sing for joy to the Lord, and we shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. We come before you with thanksgiving and extol you with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. We give thanks to the Lord because of his righteousness. We will sing the praises of the name of the Lord Most High. We declare that the peace of Christ rule in our hearts, since we are all members of one body and we are called to peace and we are called to be thankful. We declare that this is all for our benefit so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we declare that we will not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. We declare that we are speaking to one another with psalms and hymns and songs from the Spirit. We sing and make music from our hearts to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We declare thanks be to the God who always leads us as captives in Christ's triumphant procession and uses us to spread the aroma of the knowledge of Christ everywhere. We declare that we rejoice always, giving thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God for us in Christ Jesus. Father, we declare that this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We will give thanks and we will worship you, O Lord. Amen.